All right, this is Ken Roosevelt. We're going to talk about <clears throat> conditional probability basic. And first thing I want to introduce to you is a notation that's found on page 224 in your book. It looks like this, P, B, A. And how that translates is the probability of uh, probability. Oh, whoops, sorry. Probability of B given A. And that's uh, what we're going to talk about here is the probability that some uh, event occurs given another event which it depends on has already occurred. So first thing we do is we look at this problem from Alex. What do we do every time? That's what we do. Okay. It is estimated that 25% of all Californian adults are college graduates and that 32% of all Californian adults are regular internet users. It is also estimated that 19% of California adults are both college graduates and regular internet users. So we should be getting the hang of this by now, I hope. Um, since it says 19% are both, I'm going to put 19% in here. Hold on one second. That always comes up. Okay. And if that's true, and this is our college graduates, and this is our um, internet users, In this whole circle here, uh, we can only have 25% total. So that makes an additional 6, because 25% minus 19% leaves 6. I'm leaving off the percent signs. I hope that's OK. OK, and on the other side, we have 32%. So in this whole right-hand circle, in regions 2 and 3, we need a total of 32%. Well, region 2 has 19, so 32 minus 19 leaves 13 here. So those are our percentages and that, that's how we get them. We're not done though. There's another area that we could fill in. That's the area outside. So let's see, 25 plus that 38, 62% outside. Okay, now we're going to answer two questions. First one, among Californian adults, what is the probability that a randomly chosen internet user is a college grad? So out of the internet users, we're going to pick randomly someone and then want to know what is the chance that that person is a college grad. So first of all, since we're in the internet user category, we are in this circle and only in this circle. So none of the stuff outside that circle matters because it's given that the person is an internet user. And now the question remains is what's the chance of them also being a college grad? Well, it's going to be 19 out of what's the total for this circle? 32. So our answer here for the first one, and I'm going to call that P of A given B, because that's what it is. If you're considering this to be A and this over here to be B, then what I just found here is P of A given B. And the formula in the book uh, says that it's, let's see, it's P of the intersection divided by P of the region. So the given, the probability of the given is in the denominator. The probability of the intersection is in the numerator. And uh, that makes sense because what did we say it would be? You have 19 chances out of 32. So the formula makes more sense if you figure it out first on your own and then you go, oh, now the formula makes sense because what did I do? I took the 19 and I divided it by the total, which is 32. And that makes sense because I only care about what's going on in this circle here. Outside of that, doesn't matter. All right, let's answer part B. If um, part A on these problems asks for P of A given B, then it's likely part B will ask for P of B given A, which is not difficult either. 
Let's just check to make sure. What is the probability that a California adult is an internet user? Given, ah, given, that he or she is a college gradu graduate. So they're giving us A, and they want to know B. So it is P of B given A, and that's written P of B given A. And we do P of the intersection divided by P of the um, P of that region by itself. So um, I'll write this down. Why not? And I'll put P of A on the bottom. And we're going to do, let's see, it's 19 divided how many are inside A? 25. And we got to convert both of these to decimals. So let's go over here to Alex, where I got this problem from. And the top one is 19 divided by 32. So 19 divided by 32. Any guesses? Mm, I don't know. 0.59375. See, that was beyond me. 0.59375. Could have figured it out eventually, but why bother? That's what the calculator is for, right? right? And then 19 divided by 25. 0.76. That one's easy. And let's clear that. Was it 19 divided by 25? Yeah, okay. So, and that's it, right? Very good. We're going to do more practice, though, just so we can do one more. And um, let's see what they have for us here. It is estimated that 30% of all adults in the United States invest in stocks and 83% of U.S. adults have invested in fixed income instruments. It is also estimated that 24% of U.S. adults have investments in both stocks and fixed income instruments. So they're giving us the intersection here is 24%. What is the probability that a random chosen stock investor also invests in fixed income instruments? Sorry. Well, they're asking me um, P of uh, fixed income given stock investor, pretty much. So that's not hard. Uh, we could break this down and do it on another page, but we know it's going to be something divided by something else. So what is it going to be? It's going to be the intersection divided by the given. What part of this is given? What is the probability that a randomly chosen stock investor? So they're a stock investor. And how many? 30% of adults are stock investors. So I'm going to be dividing by, on the bottom, 30. And what do I put up top? The intersection. Because I want to know what, per, what part of that 30% is also fixed income instruments. And that's 24. So I do 24 divided by 30. Um, what's that? It's 80 percent, right? Yep. All right. Now the next one. You know the numerator already is going to be 24, right? Unless they do something crazy, but I don't expect they will, since this is conditional probability basic, right? What is the probability that a random chosen U.S. adult they invest in stocks? given that he or she invests in fixed so now it's given the fixed income that they also invest in stock so fixed income was 83 um, percent and we're going to take the intersection which is 24 and divide it by 83 and 83 I think is a prime number so can't do that in my head and the answer is point 289, so we'll call that 0.29, rounding to the second decimal place to the hundredths. And that's it. Very good, I've mastered it, and so will you. Alright, that's it for this round. See you later. Bye bye.